I just love this style. This is gonna be an interesting test. <laughs> I hope so. I just love testing stuff. <laughs> this is gonna be fun, so let's do it. Hello everyone. Today we're going to see if we can actually transfer and print our own photos using a homemade gel plate, <laughs> like this one. <laughs> or this one. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can print our own photos using these homemade jack plates. That would be an interesting test. I think so. <laughs> In a previous video, I showed you how to make your own homemade gel printing plate using gelatin. And in the same video, I also showed how to make a vegan option using agar agar. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. I'm <laughs> not so sure. <laughs> so this is what a vegan plate looks like. It's kind of firm. This one is a little thinner. <laughs> it didn't work really well. <laughs> Yeah, so be sure to check out this video and learn how to make your own homemade plate. It's actually pretty easy to do. And since I like to transfer and monoprint my own photos, I decided to put my homemade gel plates to the test and see if I can actually transfer my lovely photos using something made from gelatin. <laughs> That would be interesting. <laughs> it will be so nice if it actually works because it's so much cheaper to make and also because I can make it my own. I can make it any size I want and any shape I want. So it would be really nice if I can use this to print my photos. <laughs> this is like the best part because I love testing stuff. So stick around to the end of this video as I'm going to test and compare uh, printing my own photos using a homemade gel plate versus using a commercial plate like this one. I'm going to use gel press printing plate and compare it. So let's see which one, which one, this one or this one. Let's see which one uh, you like better. <laughs> so stick around, I'm going to do it at the end of the video. <laughs> it will be a fun test to do. So here are a few of my homemade gel plates. This one is eight by six inches and it's pretty firm. This one, on the other hand, is 5x7 and quite soft. And I like this round one. Like I mentioned before, this is what's so great about homemade gel plates. You can make them at any size or shape you want. So I'm going to use this Amsterdam paint to transfer my photos. I also need a brayer to spread the paint and I'm going to print my images into one of these sketchbooks. And finally, these are the photos I'm going to transfer. I printed them with my laser printer. I like to place my homemade gel plate over glass or plexiglass. And then I press it down really well so I can hold it up and use it almost like a stamp. By the way, I'm using Van Dyke brown color here. Uh, I'll post a link to this color paint in the description box below this video. So make sure you press the more button. Some people write to me, they don't know where to find the links. This is nice, we got a nicely dark impression in the paint. So this is what photo transfer is about. We transfer the photo from the laser print to the plate 
and then to the receiving surface, which happens to be this sketchbook. And if you like this process, you're going to love my book, the new mixed media photography book. It's available on Amazon, so check it out soon. Oh, and it's also available as a digital download. So check out the links to the book below this video. <laughs> you're gonna love it. It's a great book. So yeah, it looks like homemade gel plates are good for transferring photos. But then I didn't have much success with the round plate. And after a couple of failed attempts, I decided I need to try something else. So when this happened, I thought maybe the problem is that I'm using the wrong paint. So I decided to try a different paint. Maybe I just used the wrong paint. So yeah, let's try. Let's try a different paint. So I decided to use Blake Studio Acrylic in Cobalt Blue. By the way, check out below for a link to a video I made about best paints for printing with a commercial gel plate. I definitely love this color. So I really hope this transfer works. And sorry about my camera trying desperately to focus here. I do apologize. Yay, yeah, this paint definitely works great. Uh, generally speaking, most uh, DIY plates will want paints that are more soft and fluid, but not as fluid as craft paints. These are usually not going to work for image transfer. Yeah, so try to choose something a little less fluid than craft paints. And since I found out that Bleak acrylic paint works great, uh, I was wondering what other paints might work as well. I'm not an expert on acrylic paints, but it seems to me that for the round plates, best are uh, less heavy body, more fluid, more soft. I think they're called soft body acrylic paints. <laughs> so look for that when you're in the art store. <laughs> so now I'm going to try Artist Loft Academic Level Acrylic. I'm pretty sure I got it at Michael's. Looks like this paint is also going to work. I think the round plates uh, yield really fun and interesting looking mono prints. <laughs> and by the way, I made this uh, plate uh, using a round cake pan. Uh, to form it. Give it a try. It's really fun and really easy to do. And then I made my favorite one for today. And for this one, I used another artist loft uh, paint. This one is Mars Black and along with Lamp Black, uh, these are my favorite blacks to use. They create like an old style print. So I really prefer those type of blacks, but you might like something else. Just use what you like. <laughs> Don't listen to me. <laughs> okay, so now let's make my favorite one for today. And as I mentioned, this is uh, Artist Loft Mars Black.
I'm not sure what it is, but there's this dark and an obscure quality to prints made with uh, homemade gel plate, which I, I just love it. I just love this type of uh, print. Like, look at this one. I'll just drop a photo in the video. This type of uh, photos remind me, uh, they look so much like old prints that were printed in the 1800s and I love it so much. I, I just admire those prints and I think it's really difficult to replicate this look with a commercial plate. So now I'm going to try printing with the soft flabby gelatin plate. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it became so soft uh, because I used less gelatin when I made it. Uh, but I'm not sure. Anyway, it, it turned out uh, soft and let's try it. Let's see if this one works. Another interesting test to do today. <laughs> And make sure you stay for the most interesting test today of comparing printing with a homemade plate versus a commercial plate. It's coming up soon. This one looks pretty dark on camera, but actually this one turned out very nice. Definitely one of my favorites, as the original photo was taken at night. So at this point, I wanted to see what's the difference between printing my photos with a homemade gel plate and a commercial plate. So I'm going to use this one. It's a gel press uh, printing plate. You can buy it in any art store or online. Yeah. I'll just post a link to this gel plate in the description box below this video. So obviously I'm going to use the same laser photo for the test. And I'm also going to transfer and monoprint on the same paper. And I'm going to use the same color, but I'm going to use different brands since the commercial plate prefers a heavy body paint. And for the homemade plate, I need to use a soft body paint. So it will be different brands, but the same color. It's going to be a fair test. So nobody complains about it. <laughs> and if you have my latest book, this test is on page 119. So you can follow along with the video. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I printed more monoprints off camera using my homemade gel plate and I especially like this one. So I'm going to print the same photo but this time I'm going to use a store-bought gel plate and let's see which one we like better. And again I printed the same photo using my laser printer. For the commercial plate I'm using Amsterdam acrylic paint. As you can see, the difference between the two is quite obvious. The homemade plate is uh, darker, it has less contrast, um, it's, uh, it's soft, and it's not as clear. And I just like it. I like it a lot. I, I think it looks timeless and I love it. It really speaks to me. <laughs> and the commercial one has a lot more contrast and it's clear and it looks more like a modern print not as timeless as the homemade gel plate. So let me know in the comments below which one you like better. This will be very interesting for me to learn. Maybe you like the modern look better, that's fine. <laughs> 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video today and found it uh, useful in any way. I know this video is a little different from my usual fast-paced tutorial video, but I wanted to try a different format uh, today, uh, which is more personal and slower, which this is how art and being creative is like. Usually it's not fast-paced and it's not detached. I wanted it to be more personal. And I would love to hear from you. I would like to know if you prefer this type of uh, video. Maybe you prefer a fast-paced tutorial video. Maybe you think this is too slow for you and it's not to the point. I'm definitely okay with some uh, constructive uh, criticism. I'm not offended easily. <laughs> so feel free to tell me what's on your mind. I would love to hear it actually. <laughs> And don't worry, I'm not going to make a studio vlog type of videos. I think there are enough uh, video out there of this type and they are much better than uh, what I can do. <laughs> I'm thinking of making something uh, that will be between a studio vlog and a tutorial, a fast paced I mean, tutorial. It will be a video where you can follow my processes, see what I'm creating, uh, what materials I'm using, and at the same time we can talk about art and photography and mixed media and everything creative, everything that is part of the creative world. <laughs> so I hope you will join me and let's see how it, how it goes. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> So it seems like the, it's bad, I'll use the previous footage and yeah, that's it. <laughs>